All right, so here we are, question three, part C this time of the AP Calculus AB 2022 free response section, no calculator allowed portion. So I'm covering each of these parts, A, B, C, and D in their own individual videos. So if you wanna see A or B or D, check out the other videos. Uh, first and foremost, again, whenever I see a graph on an AP Calc test, the first thing that I always want to do is make sure I know what it is the graph of. So we can see clearly up here that we have the graph of F prime. So that's our derivative graph. Cool. Now let's go see what they're asking us. So they're saying let G be the function defined by G of X equals F of X minus X. And they want to know on what intervals is G decreasing for that interval 0 to 7. So as soon as you see that type of language, as soon as somebody starts talking to me about when a function is increasing or decreasing, that immediately tells me that I want to be looking at a first derivative test. And so here, sometimes just understanding that language and seeing that language and knowing that that's most likely where you want to go helps you get started on the pathway. And so from there, you would say, OK, well, let me just follow that path and see what I would do. So I've got the equation g of x equals f of x minus x. So that's I'm trying to find what's happening, the decreasing of g. Well, step one of the first derivative test would say go find the first derivative. And so I'd say, all right, well, the derivative of g would just be called g prime. The derivative of f would just be called f prime of x. And then the derivative of x, that's a power rule, that would end up just being negative 1 then we know where this thing is going to need to change is finding critical values. So we'd want to say, okay, well, when does this equal zero? So I would say, all right, well, just take my derivative and set it equal to zero. Again, do the same steps you would do on a normal first derivative test. And then you say, okay, well, if I go ahead and add one and add one, I can see out of there that one equals f prime of x. So this right here is telling me that add f prime of x equaling 1, I've got a critical value. Well, f prime of x, that's my graph, right? That's what I'm looking at up here. So at, at whenever that is 1, and remember, it's equal to 1, so that is a y value right there. So at that y value, I know that that's where I would end up with a critical value. So there's my critical value from this graph. Then step three of the process on this one is we need to know where this thing is decreasing. So decreasing, remember, means you would have a negative derivative. You would want to know when is g prime of x less than or equal to zero. And so on this problem here, what we would say is I want to know, so g prime of x is this equation here. So I want to know when is f prime of x minus 1 less than or equal to 0. So this is where we deviate from doing a proper first derivative test because we're not looking to do a number line game and all those pieces. So we would come through now and we're just looking for where is it decreasing. So we set up the decreasing and we go ahead and solve that out. So I add 1. And what it's telling me now is that whenever f prime of x is less than or equal to 1, that is when g prime of x is less than 0. And so this would be the, the situation where my graph is decreasing. So looking back up here, I can see that that less than 1 portion, that is all this section here of my graph, because all of that is less than 1, right? This is, again, a y value right here, and we marked that earlier. This is y equals 1. And so whenever the graph is less than 1, that's when our g of x graph is decreasing. So when would that be happening? It would be happening starting here and ending at our critical value of 5. So our conclusion on this would be that this is going to be decreasing on the interval from 0 that is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to five where that ends so that is the interval where this is decreasing and so on this problem where we would get our point here this would be two points on this one would just be kind of setting up and getting this derivative here understanding that portion of the problem and then getting through the rest of it and earning the second point would just be getting down to here and getting your interval properly so that would be your one point and showing your work as you come through there is going to be where you get your justification so following a first derivative test working your way down through this process gets you two points
Thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, please click that like button and subscribe. And also share it with your friends and anyone else you know who might be crying about an upcoming AP Calc test. You can find more videos from me, more sample AP Calc questions, and my complete AP Calc study guide over at my website, apcalcprep.com. Have a great one.